guys. So if you hear my husband laughing in the, in the other room, he's actually watching a comedian because I don't allow him to be in here because he'll make me laugh and he'll make me mess up and be really embarrassed because I'm talking to a camera. <laughs> so if you hear him, he's in there. But I've been having a lot of questions about like kind of our situation and what's going on with this pregnancy. Um, so I thought I would start from the very beginning. So my blood type is RH negative, which is O negative. And um, we ended up finding out that my husband's blood type is O positive. So I'm terrible at trying to explain the RH negative factor. Um, all I know is that if you don't get this shot called the Rogam shot, uh, it is very bad. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened in my situation. So I gave birth to my son, Akaden, He'll be 10 in November. Um, so you get this Rogam shot when you're halfway, I think around 20 weeks. It gave it to me. And so then when I gave birth, you know, labor and all the craziness of labor, well, our blood's mixed and he's O positive. Uh, we ended up finding that out later too. So our blood's mixed and um, they never gave me the Rogam shot, which I don't think, because this should have never happened. But what happened was I developed these antibodies in my blood. So what these antibodies do is they fight off anything that comes in contact with your body. Um, they think it's a foreign invader and they're like, uh, warning, no, we need to fight this off. This should not be in your body. I ended up not knowing any of this. And our son was about one, I think one and a half when we got pregnant again. So we go in and um, I think I was, you know, when you find out six weeks pregnant. And then um, I ended up thinking I was 10 or 11 weeks pregnant, but the baby ended up dying at eight weeks. So I go into my OB and um, she ended up coming in to the office and telling us, look, you have, what, and try to explain it all to us, which was, woo, information way over our heads, right? But we were devastated because we're like, oh my gosh, like, are we ever gonna be able to have kids again? This, it was a shock to us. So we ended up going to a um, specialist doctor. They did test on my husband and they check, again, I'm not a doctor, I have no idea what they checked, but they checked a bunch of stuff in his blood, in my blood, and we ended up finding out that we have a 50-50 chance of the baby being my blood type which were like, oh, cool, like 50-50 chance. I mean, what are the odds, you know, like maybe the baby can be my blood type. So um, we ended up getting pregnant again and that's where we come to the story with Titus. So what they did back in that time, which he's only seven, which was not very long ago, but they did this thing called an amniocentesis. And what it, that is, is they stick a big needle in into your belt into my belly and they they get fluid and they that's how they used to check for the blood type for the baby's blood type so we got that done and he ended up being o positive also <laughs> so um we had a game plan with our specialist doctor and we go in every week for an ultrasound and what they do in that ultrasound is they check um i don't know what it's really called but they check like fluid, the blood flow through the brain. And um, they what they're really monitoring is if the baby becomes anemic because that's what happens when the RH um, negative antibodies start fighting off you know, the baby. So we are going in every week. We ended up getting to 33 or 34 weeks. I think I had just turned 34 weeks. And um, we go in for the normal ultrasound and all of a sudden the tech leaves and the doctor, two doctors came in and they're like, okay, so here's the deal. We could either do a blood transfusion, um, to the baby through the belly, but that's causes, you know, your percentage of losing the baby. It gets higher and higher every time you do that. They ended up explaining all that to us, but, um, they're like, but you're, you're already 34 weeks. We feel like we, for this type of situation, we like for the um, baby to get to 35 weeks. We're almost there. So why not, let's just go and deliver. So 
we're gonna have you deliver within 48 hours. So we're like, okay, let's do this. So we go in, they start giving me, you know, Pitocin and all that stuff to start going into labor. And we end up having Titus and on May 4th, and he was um, not very healthy. And he came out, I got to hold him for a little bit, but then after that, they took him directly to the NICU. Um, so what happens is with the baby, when my body starts to fight it off, is they get really bad jaundice. Um, and I know some people are like, oh, it's just jaundice, put them under the light and cook them, you know, they'll be good. The NICU doctors were like, that's not the case. Like when you have the RH factor and it's fighting the baby off, jaundice is really, really scary. So he had high levels of jaundice, um, which was really scary. He, en he ended up having to have three blood transfusions to get all that to, you know, help him with his blood because my body was fighting him off. Um, he was in the NICU for 28 or 29 days. We got to bring him home. He, um, I'm trying to I'm really trying not to get emotional, but he uh, was on oxygen for, I think, two months. And so we, we had an at-home nurse come and uh, monitor him every week, too, just to make sure that he was okay. And he ended up coming out of it, and he is a rambunctious, crazy, hyper seven-year-old today. And he is amazing. We just, I mean, both our boys are just amazing. And so... Um, I had ended up having, I don't want to go into details, but I had two miscarriages after Titus and they're still doing tests to see if it was because of the RH factor, but cause they were already kind of later on like 12 and 13 weeks pregnant. Um, so we were done. We were like, we're, we're blessed with our boys. We're done. So fast forward to now. <laughs> so that brings us to this pregnancy. So we get pregnant and then we uh, go in to my OB and it's been so long that um, I was trying to tell them that, hey, I'm O, I'm o negative, I am sensitized, I need to go see a, a specialist, and, you know, doctors are like, well, let's just do all the blood work and all that stuff, so I ended up having to do a bunch of blood work and, and a lot of things, and um, eventually went in to see the specialist. So what they do now, instead of doing an amniocentesis, is they, uh, it's all through blood work, which is really nice because the amniocentesis wasn't very fun. Um, so they do that through blood work now, which is, which is nice. So we found out that this baby is O positive. So I've had six pregnancies and all of them have been O positive. <laughs> I'm like, I just have bad luck, I guess. I mean, 50, 50 chance and all of them have been O positive. It is what it is. So, um, you know, with that, we're like, okay, it's going to be like Titus this time around. Um, but with Titus, we were able to get, you know, pretty far along in the pregnancy without any kind of worry. And with this one, we go in for our 18 week ultrasound and they do all the measurements and all that stuff. Cause they, at a half, when you're around halfway, they do, you know, they check all the limbs and all that stuff and everything looked great. Every, she's growing properly, everything, her heart, everything's, everything's great. But the doctor comes in and they're like, since you're O negative and you're sensitized, we're just going to check that blood flow. We don't ever check it before 18 weeks. Um, so we're going to check it now since you're 18 weeks. And he checked it and he came in and told us, okay, your levels, the baby's levels are at a two plus. A normal person is at a one. Uh, we start to get a little worried when it's a 1.5 and your baby is a two plus. Uh, so we were devastated. Um, my husband and I just, it was hard to hear that because we're like, we're only 18 weeks. Uh, what's going to happen now? So they had us go in the next day, which was yesterday. And they wanted to just double check to make sure that the levels, you know, maybe she was just really hyper that day. So they wanted to check and they were a little lower than what they were, but they were still above a two, which is extremely high. So at that point, they send us into a room. Um, they're calling Phoenix to try to get us in as soon as possible because what's going to happen now is uh, she needs to get an in utero, I think it's what it's called, an in utero blood transfusion. And so uh, that's when they'll stick the needle in, um, give her blood, 
one so one day they'll do that they'll wait a couple days do it again because she's so small they don't want to pump her with too much blood um, so we'll be in Phoenix this coming week because only bigger cities do this type of procedure but with every blood transfusion it's a 1% chance of losing the baby so we'll have to do them every two weeks until it's safe to deliver so we figured we have a 90% chance of bringing our baby home. Those are awesome odds, I would think. Um, but still, it's really scary. Um, uh, I'm anxious and nervous, um, but I have faith. And I know God's going to take care of us during this time. Um, I'm not going to get emotional. Uh, I feel her all the time. And so that's good. And I mean, that could just be another thing too that the, our um, specialist doctor said that she could just be really hyper and she does, she moves all the time. But that could like elevate the flow too through the blood. But they had, they checked it two days in a row. We're just taking it day by day and hopefully, you know, we can get to Phoenix and give her some blood. So yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys an update kind of more in depth and detailed because I kind of explain it to people, but it's, it's hard. And I mean, I don't even really understand it all that well either, but um, that's pretty much what's going on. So thanks for watching.